Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Utah Film Pod. My name is Josh Terry. I'll be your host. And I am joined once again after a week off by Danny Hatch and not after a week off by Mark LaRocco. How are you guys doing? Great. Really and good. welcome back, Danny. Thanks. Yeah, no, sorry. I'm, I've been slacking off here, but not entirely. Well, it's, it's if, we yeah, I mean, I get the impression on. that, uh, that uh, even if you have not been on the podcast, that movies have not been far from your life. Oh, no, I'm, so. I'm a junkie. I'm obsessed. I could never, you know, um, but with a purpose this time. So I've, I've been trying to do um, like marathons a week, which I'm not sure how long this is going to last. Wow. Um, but the reason why is because we're starting up a Patreon account, which you guys kind of talked about a little bit last week. Right. For those of you unfamiliar with Patreon, it's just a way to kind of support creators, get some extra content while helping them get money directly. Um, we're not big enough where we don't make money off of ads or anything like that. Um, so we just have all these fees with like being on SoundCloud, having these platforms where we're able to put this podcast up. Uh, we've bought equipment, you know, so there's like a lot of things that we're putting into this podcast. So, you know, if you like what we do and you want to help us out, like, you know, we could be doing a GoFundMe, right? But this way you can still get a lot of extra benefits. Uh, we're trying to build up a little bit of a community there. Um, we're going to be releasing the podcast early on there. So we try to record podcast episodes before the movies come out on Fridays. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you know, you're on Patreon, you'll be able to get these episodes like on Wednesday or Thursday before Friday. So you can kind of judge beforehand if you want to go to the premiere. Um, otherwise you'll have to wait until the weekend. Um, and then, uh, for, just something else that we're starting right off the bat. I'm releasing this kind of article series uh, called Reminiscing, where um, because I hate modern movies, as I think we've kind of established, <laughs> I'm just watching so many old movies. So um, to tie it all back to sports, this week has been Rocky. Um, oh, wow. Not nice. that like Rocky, like my life situation, although it's kind of there too. But the <laughs> movie series starting, is starring uh, Sylvester Stallone, um, man, it's been amazing going back through those movies. And like, I, I just, I had to go back after editing the, uh, film score episode and like having that theme song stuck in my head for weeks. I'm like, I have to watch, right, right. I have to watch this movie. And then, you know, I had to watch the second one cause it kind of completes the first one. And then after that, I'm just like, I can't stop. So I'm, I'm already on four right now. And uh, definitely got to make my way to Rocky Balboa, right? I haven't watched five yet, so that's going to be interesting. Like, I've never seen it. Cause I, well, I was going to ask, like, how many of these have you not seen ever? And how that's many the of them are... One. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, I'll be really interested to see what you think of Rocky <laughs> yeah. five. <laughs> right. I might just skip it. No, yeah, no. No, no but, so, so we'll but, see. You know, Although, to be fair... I usually end up liking um, movies and series that like aren't as popular. I've noticed because mm -hmm. like I, I liked the Last Jedi. Am I allowed to say that? Is anyone going to come out? Oh sure, I, I I liked it. I like the ones that are kind of a little different. So like maybe Rocky Five is going to be my favorite, and everyone's going to judge me for forever. So we'll see. I really hope it's not your Patreon favorite. To find out <laughs> if I liked it or not. I I would not be surprised at all for you to find that there are things you like about that movie, but okay. I really hope it's not your favorite Rocky movie. At the end. <laughs> Fair enough. That's uh, no, yeah. No, well, so sure. so so what else have you been marathoning then? What other ones are on there? Yeah. Okay. So um. Uh, I do have an article up there already uh, on um, the the Mummy, the 1999 version. Okay. And I had never seen that one before. And oh my goodness, that was so much fun. And I just kind of talk a lot about how like campy versus quality and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Because I mean, it was a great film. I was just blown away. And to be fair, it's like one of my favorite genres, like adventure family movies, like you're going to win me over with that, right? Yeah. Um, but the reason we watched that one is because our marathon of last week and kind of the week before was the the classic horror monster movies from like uh, the okay. 30s. So we watched, wow. you know, The Mummy, but we watched Dracula, Frankenstein, um, Bride of Frankenstein, um, Creature from the Black Lagoon, which I hadn't seen before, and that <laughs> one was amazing. 
So um, those movies were awesome. So yeah, no, we, it's just, it's been fun watching all of this stuff. But now that I have classes and other things, this Rocky one, I'm like, it's getting rocky. So I'm just like, right, oh, right. I don't know well, how long I can keep this up. But I will be trying to do an article like this every week. So I'll be watching at least one movie that's kind of that throwback. Nice. Yeah. I have to, I have to say that I was mildly disappointed that it wasn't a Brendan Fraser marathon that you were going to. Because <laughs> that could be that could be a good time. There's, uh, there's no, a bunch no, of different. No, no, I really, really like his stuff. Like, yeah. Oh my goodness. I just I rewatched uh, Blast from the Past a couple months ago, and oh, that one that one's always a fun, always a fun watch. He did he did some fun stuff for sure. Yeah. He he had a big year in '99 because I think The Mummy and Blast from the Past are both were they both that, that year? Same year. Yeah, but that's probably are, about there. Do you know about his new movie, The Whale? You guys heard of this? I've heard a lot of coming at. About it. I think it's yeah. being released at the Venice Film Festival this like this month or you know in September. And he, it's a Darren Aronofsky movie, and he plays a six hundred pound man who's trying to reconnect with his teenage daughter, um, who is played by the girl from, the red haired girl from Stranger Things, Sadie Sink. Oh yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, and so it's it's like. I don't know how it's going to be. I mean, it's a lot of prosthetics, a lot of heavy makeup. I mean, he has gained weight, but like they're going to make him look 600 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and it's Darren it's supposed... Aronofsky, so it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, it'll be nuts. <laughs> wow. I mean, as, wow. a, as a fan of like binging the monk every so often. So, you know, you have your right. <laughs> X-Files. I do monk, right? Okay. And uh, Dale the Whale was one of the more famous reoccurring characters. Mm. And he was kind of this you know, how many pounds was that? I think it might've been like 800 pound man. Like he was just massive. Oh, but wow. He was fun. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, so, uh, Mark, you pointed out the, the success of Brendan Fraser during 1999. Maybe that's as good a segue as we're going to get <laughs> to, uh, to our big feature piece today for this hey. episode, which, uh, which, you know, honestly, I just want to turn the time over to you because this has kind of been your idea. You've been spearheading yeah. it and you finally got me to do a little research and get off my, my figurative backside to do, <laughs> to get ready. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take it away, okay. Mr. Loraco. So, so here's what we're going to do. This is going to be the hat. I'm going to draw the names from. It's actually a, okay. For what, a puzzle give, lid. Introduce the whole thing. Yeah, oh, the, yeah. Okay. So we're doing a movie draft where we are each going to pick um, our three, Th three movie years that we like or our three favorite movie years or three movie years that we want to talk about that contain movies that that are among our favorites or that have good memories for us and so we're each going to pick three movies and we're going to do it in snake draft style so whoever has to end up being uh, picking third will then start round two so they'll get to pick two in a row and then the start of round three will be the first picker so they'll pick uh, at the end of round two and the beginning of round three. So it's kind of like one, two, three, three, two, one, one, two, three. And so we don't know who the order yet until I draw these names. Um, and then, at, so, we'll so just is, it just, is this just going to be a more complicated way for you guys to steal my picks? Yes. Uh, is that, yeah. Or maybe this will be the first time you start because I think you yeah, have I know, like yeah. on bus go You picks, might, right? you might right. get number one. You might get right. to start. So, so here, are, here are the papers. Oh, I will that. confirm. Oh, oh hey. That's me. Yeah. Josh, hey. Mark, and Danny. They're all the oh, exact sorry. same size. I'm going to now put them in the <laughs> Oh, I thought the, that was going to be the order. <laughs> now, did you have one of them in the freezer before, uh, no. before you started? Is to, this uh, the Patrick Ewing? I was conspiracy? going to say, yeah. Yeah, you're going to make sure that the Knicks... So get here we go. I have, the, I have the papers in here. I'm going to go ahead and like make them all around. And here's, here's number one. <laughs> if you bring one. it up right close to the mic, then it's okay. like, you know, the little... Okay. Number one <laughs> is... What does hey, that say? look at that. Josh, hey, perfect. okay, you get to go first. Okay. And then there's two more in here. Let's pick the next one. Oh, it's Danny. Hey. So I will be going third and fourth. So um, you should have yeah. left it in the freezer longer, Mark. Uh, I could repick if you guys aren't happy with that. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay. I think okay. that's all right. <laughs> so Josh picks first, Danny picks second, and then I will pick third, and then I will start round two. Okay. And so the so, idea is to, to pick the year and give just kind of a quick little breakdown of why we like that year, what came out and. Yep. You yeah. Know, and you can just, just talk about kind of the concise you little... had, maybe theater, maybe pick okay. a few movies that are like, this was why this is an important movie year for you. And yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well, so um, I'm going to roll the dice here a little bit and I'm going to pick 
not my number one choice, but, but what would be considered probably my number two or number three, because, and this is this, you know, just add a little tension, a little excitement to the proceedings. (laughs) Um, because I don't think that my number two choice is one that you guys are going to choose, but of course it could blow up in my face. So, um, so I was kind of surprised, and this is actually going to go, dovetail into our uh, previous episode, because um, last week, or last episode, we talked about ET, and uh, which, you know, I had associations with for a long, long time, and some of you know, which I discussed previously. Um, what I didn't realize is how many other great movies came out in 1982. And so I, 1982 is going to be my first choice. Um, great. So, so ET was probably, well, I don't know if that would be my biggest movie that year or not, honestly, because, because so some of the other ones, and maybe I should preface this by saying that my understanding of, of our, of our draft here is not that we're picking the, the years that have the most celebrated best movies of all time per, you know, selections so much as more personal choices, right? Because I, I kind of based my choices on well, these are the years that had the most of my favorite movies coming out instead of, you know, I think, I think Mark and I, you know, you and I were talking earlier about, you know, like 1939 has always been this really big celebrated year because it's got a lot of all time favorites and, and there's certainly movies that I like, but they're not my favorites. And so Mm. 1939 wouldn't be a good choice for me. Whereas something like 82, which probably doesn't have as many like AFI's top 100, et cetera, is still kind of a big deal for me because uh, E.T. is in there. Um, Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan, just one of my all-time, all-time favorites. I'm getting ready to go see that because they're going to have it uh, Megaplex again, uh, just kind of a brief run. Uh, Tootsie, which is just one of the, you know, it's kind of, Tootsie is one of those movies, uh, if you're not familiar with it already, uh, Dustin Hoffman plays an out-of-work actor who actually dresses up as a woman and gets a job on a soap opera without anybody knowing that he's actually a man. And it's kind of one of these preposterous ideas on paper that somehow just becomes magic in on the screen itself. Uh, Sidney Pollack plays his, his agent in one of my all time favorite supporting kind of comic roles. Um, but the road warrior came out in 1982, which was, kind of the second official Mad Max movie, but really the first Mad Max movie in terms of it being like set in the post-apocalyptic wasteland type thing. The first, the first Mad Max was from a couple of years earlier and was really just supposed to be kind of the near future as, as all the gasoline and the, mm-hmm. the, the, the things were starting to fall apart, but it was still pretty much kind of like a normal civilization. Road Warrior was the first one where you have, you know, you still have Mel Gibson and he's got like the souped up crazy, you know, weathered car, the, the, the Ford Falcon driving across the desert and finding fighting off all kinds of crazy dressed, you know, marauders. Uh, marauders. Yeah, various, right, right. Yeah. Uh, so so Road, Road Warrior was that year. Uh, Tootsie, Wrath of Khan, um, Blade Runner was that year, you know, just kind of really one of the, in terms of style, just one of the all-time uh, most influential sci-fi look and feel movies. Um, and then The Thing uh, from John mm-hmm. Carpenter, which is, just kind of a horrifying, but also just mesmerizing kind of whodunit, you know, almost a, I think it was described as um, kind of a sci-fi horror version of the Agatha Christie story, uh, 10 Little Indians, where you, you have a group of people who are all isolated. In this case, they're in an Antarctic, uh, you know, station out, you know, in this frozen tundra and uh, this, this alien entity that can, disguise itself as whatever it wants infiltrates the group and nobody can get away because they're all kind of isolated here. And, uh, and so it's kind of a question of, well, who's the monster and one by one people keep dying. And, and then, I mean, one, I remember I'm, I'm old enough to remember this movie kind of getting a backlash at the time and it was, didn't really get very good reviews. And it uh, I think it was, kind of criticized for having some really over the top kind of gore and violence. And basically what it is, is that they, they really wanted to bring the monster to life in this crazy, vivid, uh, you know, practical effects, 
way. And so, so the metamorphosis scenes, because sometimes you would catch the alien kind of in mid transition and some of them are just, just bonkers. Um, I think this has become more of not even just a cult hit, but more of just kind of a celebrated kind of sci-fi horror landmark in the years since then. But I do, I do remember it not getting the greatest reception early on, but uh, yeah. So 1982 had a surprising, like, as I'm kind of looking through there, just a surprising number of, of favorite movies. So that would be my first choice. Okay. I'm, I am. And so who's on the board now, Danny, you're up on Danny. Yeah, no, I yeah. Hey, what you got. Well, okay. So what I was prepared for is like, I was going to defend these years as like the greatest years of all time. Kind of like what you were saying with like, you know, 1939. Okay. Mm. And I'm, I'm debating if I want to have my more nostalgic personal pick up against yours or if I want to mm. go with my like all-time favorite and just come out swinging oh, I don't know I, I, I don't choice. know what works best for the bracket it, well it's a tough choice I mean I can tell you 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 won't you know you won't be picking in a row uh so let's see so what happens is I would be picking the next two so I'll be picking yeah. third and fourth and then you will pick fifth and I can't have so, you pick mine. If you think you're going I, up I, against Josh, <laughs> so yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah, like, no, no, no. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll just I'll just come out with my best one. And you know, it wouldn't be a Utah film pod list without some kind of Danny cheat. And most of my picks <laughs> are actually You can't choose more than one year. <laughs> they're in school year form. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Okay, let's hear it. I don't know like, about that. Because here's the thing. I'm choosing between children here. It's like, I can't, you know, I, I, and it's funny because actually one of the years is um, when Schindler's List came out, spoiler. So I, I was looking at 93 and 94, mostly 93, but like, I can't cut out Shawshank Redemption and Forrest Gump from 94. So let's just know. pretend they came out in I 93. don't know. <laughs> I, w- I was actually going to allow it. I really was. But since you've actually potentially hit on one of my choices, <laughs> I'm going to have to ask you to choose. I'm going to have to ask you to pick one of those. Because oh, <laughs> like, 94 is really kind of a big year by itself. Yeah, no, yeah. 94 I don't know if you huge. can have dibs on both of them. Well, yeah, so that was the thing, is I was going to pick 94 as, like, I think it's, yeah. like, just one of the greatest years, where it's just, it like, and, and I think the 90s in general. So, like, and I think this is maybe why I wanted to do like the the hyphenated kind of ones because like um, I, I love movies by the decade because mm-hmm. like you know they capture it, it, there's kind of a similar. Now you want to take ten years? Oh my gosh, I'm not <laughs> She's going taking to take the 90s. ten years. You're taking all Just, of the nineties. I'm not going to take ten years, <laughs> but the thing that I love about the nineties is that I feel like it really like they just peaked with these like narrative character driven kind of stories, right? And so, like, yeah, 94 is just absolutely incredible with, and, and like Shawshank Redemption probably being my favorite, but you also have Pulp Fiction, and like I said, Forrest Gump, um, and Mark, got, if you want to start spitting out some You've got the Jim, Jim Carrey trifecta. I, I, yeah. was, I was one of those kids that just thought he was the funniest human alive, <laughs> and he did his three, not his first movies, but his three big stars, first big starring roles mm-hmm. in 94 with Ace Ventura, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber. And then Quiz Show, which I think is a very underrated mm-hmm. kind of true, you know, nonfiction type tale. Um, Hoop Dreams, documentary oh, yeah. that was under the Oscars. Uh, probably the best or second or third best animated movie of all time, Lion King. Um, I mean, I it was a speed year. Speed, too. And Speed. speed. Yeah. Yeah, no, that seriously, was, that, was, that was a big I, year. Yeah, no, yeah. no, exactly. It was a great year. So, yeah. So that's, so that's your choice, Danny, you're going with 94? I'm going with 94, but let's. Wow. Kind of 94. Okay. I, I can't believe you did that. I, I didn't know. If this, I didn't think this would happen. I was like, I look, I can't believe we, you did that. We have, we, have like, we have like a hundred movie years to choose from. I thought I'd get my three. Okay. Well, um, so you, you took what is my second choice. So my first choice, I already knew what it was going to be, but I'm going to have to do something okay. else on the next one. So I am, I'm going to go with. Um, Still one of mine. Dare you. Yeah. Well, let's see. I don't know. I'll just tell you the year. It's 1984. That's wow. that, that's my favorite okay. movie year. Um, okay. Because I, and it's weird. I was very young. I mean, I was six turning seven that year and my birthday is November 30th. So I was six for most of these movies that I saw. And I 
the movie that I've talked about on this podcast before as the one that I've seen probably more than any other movie in my entire life, The Never Ending Story came out oh, that that's year. That's right. That's right. And uh, the director of that movie just died this month, uh, Wolfgang Peterson. Uh, that was him? Oh, okay. Yeah, he, he did, did that. Das Boot too, right? Das Boot. Yeah, okay. that's what kind of put him on the map. And then he did yeah. Never Ending Story. And then he did some more kind of mainstream Hollywood fare like uh, Clear and Present Danger and In the Line of Fire. Um, I think I just saw him, I saw one of his movies. Now, I just I just watched Full Metal Jacket, which was Stanley Kubrick, but I could swear that I just saw something else that was Wolfgang Peterson. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. You keep talking. Few. I'm going to look it yeah. up, but I am look listening to you. Yeah. Um, also, and, and the, the other reason I chose 1984 is, I mean, although I'm I'm sure I probably went to movies before this year, I, I, I'm guessing my parents took me to like, say, E.T. when I was four or you know, maybe one of these other movies, uh, maybe war games. I definitely remember seeing a bunch of these movies in the theater when I was young. So this is war games. 84. I think it was 83, okay. 82 or okay. 83. But what I'm saying is this was a very formative year for me as a, as a movie goer, because the karate kid, I remember seeing yeah. that in the theater. That short was karate circuit. kid here. I was going to say remember seeing short circuit in the theater. Oh, Amadeus, nice. which I was probably too young to see, but it later became my favorite movie. <laughs> Amadeus really? was in the theater. I mean, it starts out with quite a bloody suicide attempt scene, and it's not yeah. really a kid's movie, but I do remember seeing that. Um, Ghostbusters, yeah, which which Holly and I had the pleasure of seeing that again on the big screen at the Utah Symphony with the live, you know, the live symphonic accompaniment. And so it was a huge year for me, just a lot of fun childhood memories in the in the theater. It also uh, featured Temple of Doom which that along with gremlins kind of led to the uh, creation of the pg-13 rating um you know yeah, the first the, movie to get the pg-13 rating no it didn't get the pg-13 no it, that's, it what, I, that's what i'm PG- asking you do you know the first movie what? to get the pg-13 oh rating? no i looked it up but i forgot it i what used to it? ask my students this as a part of a trivia course because that's oh. what i teach my composition students is movie oh. trivia. okay yeah red dawn red dawn okay yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I actually do remember learning that because, like, I saw the new Red Dawn in theater, and I was just like obsessed, and I had to learn everything about this whole, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, corner yeah. Of movie so market. yes, so eighty four is mine, um, and uh, yeah, and and you know, I, I had a couple. I mean, I can really honestly say my favorite, you know, two of my very favorite movies came out that year, and then others that are just great you know, memory movies that I probably haven't seen since then. Like, I don't remember seeing Short Circuit in the last, in the last 30 years, you know, um, but it was fun in the theater. Okay. So I, my second choice was 94. That's okay. Hold, hold on. I, I want to comment. Oh, I want to comment go ahead. because, because first of all, just to kind of echo your sentiment, um, I considered 84 because of Karate Kid and because of Ghostbusters. And so that one, oh. that was definitely a consideration. I, I didn't quite have as many that I would rank quite as high. And so I, that's, you know, I didn't go with that one. Um, but, uh, and then I think, I want to say that I went and saw Short Circuit when the Transformers, the original Transformers movie was sold out or was out of circulation. Like I was going to go there for my birthday with a couple of friends and we were going to go see the Transformers movie. And then it was sold out or it was, like I said, I think it might've been taken from rotation. And so we, I think we saw short circuit instead, but I remember going to see short circuit. I remember loving it. That's a great, that's a fun, fun yeah. movie. There's 84 was packed with good stuff. Yeah. But, uh, okay. So yeah, I guess by virtue of being last, I get to go first on the second round and I'm going to switch things up a little bit. I was going to pick another year, but now based on a conversation that we've had in the last month or so, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to get another year stolen out from under me. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm ahead sorry. and I'm gonna go ahead and pick very new. This is 2019. Uh, this is a very new year. Um, this yeah. is the this is the last year of the before times because after the pandemic, <laughs> movies have kind of gone downhill a little bit, I think. And we've just a lot of theatrical releases have now gone to streaming, and I don't know if we'll ever fully get things back. Um, this is also the year of Jojo Rabbit, which is yeah. my favorite movie That's probably of the last 10 years. Yeah. And um the farewell I really loved. Oh, that's uh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I saw I I got to see that in the theater. Uh Marriage Story, not in the theater, but Netflix, but it was a, it was another great one. Mm-hmm. And uh it as also as a as a divorce attorney from that perspective, it was interesting to see that. Um yeah. 
what they went through and the things that they said about their lawyers and behind the lawyers' backs and how the lawyers had to argue the case. And yeah. I mean, it was a relocation case and a custody case. And, you know, they played kind of dirtier than they wanted to. You could see it in certain, some of the courtroom scenes, you know, like they almost felt guilty at things that their lawyers had to say. And, um, but it's very real. And it was a sad, you know, it's good drama. Uh, Toy Story 4, which was just amazingly unexpectedly good. I mean, some some series like franchises keep going on and you just think, are they ever going to end this? But like with the quality of what they keep putting out with Toy Story, it's like, why end it if they keep doing what they're doing, you know? Um, well, I don't know. Do you count Lightyear? I haven't actually seen Lightyear, so <laughs> your, I don't. Your sentiment might change. I don't know. It might change, but it, it doesn't, to me, it's not like official... Yeah, I guess it's oh, canon sure. or whatever, but yeah, it's it's almost it like it can't even be canon. Here's the thing: <laughs> it doesn't look like a film from the '90s. So how on earth could Andy watch this film that looks like it was made in 2020? <laughs> well, why it does, can't be canon? Why does I mean in the I new Star Wars movies? Hill. Yeah, I mean, why does uh, R two D two suddenly start flying? You know, there's a lot of things you could argue about. Like, no, 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 no. Here's the thing: it's not like little, like oh, there's kind of a hole there. It's like no, it's like style. Everything that it is, it doesn't make sense to have it like shoehorned in as like this was that film. It's like, could it just be this backstory of Lightyear? Like, let's pretend he was a real person. Like, fine. This just in, Danny will not be choosing the year 2022 (laughs) as one of her choices in this draft. But I will say, I'm with you on Toy Story 4. And neither will I. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm with you on Toy Story 4, though, because like I know a lot of people didn't like that one because it's like, oh, Toy Story 3 ended so well. But here's the thing. I feel like that was the first movie where Woody actually kind of changed. Because, like, I mean, he, he goes through some growth, for sure. But, yeah. like, he always ends up the way that he started, you know, as this yeah. toy in a children's playroom. So, like, I mean, I, I really liked that one because they did something really different. It was and very And it was different. a good story. It, and yeah. it's a great ending, too. Oh, because I love it. He, he always, he's so full of so much love and loyalty. And uh, and maybe it's a little bit of neediness, like, because he, <laughs> he needs to be wanted by a kid. And he yeah. realizes, well, I don't know if we should spoil it. But anyway, it's a great, yeah, it's, it's, I really love Toy Story 4. And it was funny yeah. too. had like Key and peel in it, with some funny comic relief. And um, 1917, great movie to see in the theater. Just, in oh, fact, you're not that choosing was, that year? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that was the last, that was the last movie. there were movie. tons of awesome movies that came out in 1917. <laughs> that was the last movie I saw in the theater before the pandemic shut everything down. Mm. I saw it in February oh. of 2020 and it was, cool i mean and it was a little bit uh i don't know like a video game like first person shooter mm. you know almost as much, much like a video game as like a movie but technically i was astounded at the way they did that and just made yeah. it work um yeah the assistant i saw on an airplane just a few months ago really liked that it's kind of a harvey weinstein fictionalized version of that um oh yeah uh, yeah parasite was great and, that, and that's the one that kind of surprised was the surprise mm-hmm. winner for best picture and little women which i just saw recently and i was You're you know talking about a lot, should have yeah. seen it earlier knives out el camino the breaking bad one peanut butter falcon um i can't believe are you just it. like intentionally delaying the movie that we saw together because you haven't uh, mentioned it yet we didn't see the irishman together did we oh once upon a time in hollywood yeah, yeah i forgot go. about that yeah. no that's a great one i mean i i liked it it wasn't like a top five one for me, I would say that year, but it was really good. But there were like so many movies that year. That, like, that's that was what kind I mean. of the last good year that we've yeah. had, right? No, I it think was even, I think Joker came yeah. out. Yeah, Joker, Joker came that out year. that year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, there, were, there were a lot of great movies in 2019. Yep. Like Cats. Yeah. Oh my um, I didn't gosh. See Cats. What is wrong with you? <laughs> no, I would, because I've got 19 on my potential list and uh-huh. yeah. and I was writing down a bunch of them and I saw, oh yeah cats which uh, <laughs> at least when i checked last night had a 2.8 rating on imdb so oh wow that high that high that high wow <laughs> and people are coming in they're all like no this is like wow. you know cult classic kind of yeah 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 that one <laughs> it's got uh, we, we can discuss that one in its own episode but let's let's move on yeah. with so now we have danny yeah uh, 
you start you're 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 next you're yeah five. no I'm so glad you chose 2019 though because like I, I I figured you'd write after like all the conversations that we've had and that was yeah. just that was such a good year mm-hmm. I have a modern year to pick and it's kind of more just very nostalgic for me because this was like as I was graduating from high school and I knew I wanted to study film um, I worked at a movie theater that summer so a lot of these movies I saw little clips of but like many times because I'd watch movies on my break and that's uh 2017 and Mm -hmm. I just oh my goodness like I'm I'm looking through this list and I'm like I remember seeing these in theater and like just those experiences I just oh I loved it so much like um War for the Planet of the of the Apes uh was one where like I would take my siblings out on like these like little movie dates and we would just like hop on our bikes and go and I'd pay for everything and uh that was the last one that I I took them on and I love that trilogy so much. It's such a great end. Um, And then uh, Blade Runner 2049, which I really like. I think that movie is just so good. I think Baby Driver came out this year. It might have been 2016, but I'm pretty sure it was 2017. So you could check me on that. That does Um, sound right. But that one was so good. And it was a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was so good. And then uh, we talked about Glass Castle, which was probably my favorite movie that year. Um, and I watched that one many times. Um, another one I saw in theaters so many times just because I thought it was so funny was Logan Lucky. And oh, like, yeah, yeah like, I mean, it was movie. so quirky, kind of weird, but like, I love oceans so much. And yeah. so it just kind of, yeah. it fit it, but in a different backdrop. And Ocean 7 Eleven. Huh? Ocean 7 Eleven is what Logan <laughs> Lucky was. Dude. Don't they actually say that in the movie? <gasps> oh, that's I don't funny. remember, but man. <laughs> I know I, I I can't take credit for it. I heard yeah, some, no, somebody that's... else. It might have been another review or something, but that's Ocean Seven Eleven was one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, and then there's a lot of movies that like I knew a lot about that I I still want to check out, like The Shape of Water, um, uh, Dunkirk. I haven't sat through Phantom I... Thread. Which Wait, was, now did you uh, already Daniel... mention Ragnarok? Oh my gosh, Ragnarok. That was like yeah. the last one that I saw uh, before I left on my mission that year. So like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I mean, like it was- Good choice, good choice. It, it was just like I, a fun year for me where it was like, I loved going, like I was going to the theater like every week and then I, you know, started working there. And so it was like every day I was watching something and oh my yeah. goodness, it was so fun. So I'll, I'll have a recommendation for you. Don't bother with The Shape of Water. I think, it was <laughs> fair enough, fair I think it was a bad best picture winner it's it's got this weird mixture of being like this sort of fairy tale fish out of water kind of story like fish woman fish man human woman love story but then also some pretty graphic kind of just gross stuff in it that oh, is okay yeah I didn't I didn't like what, it what I've I didn't like seen, the tone yeah what I've seen from it is that it looks more like a movie that's fun if you know movies because it's very heavy and like references and stuff like that. So I thought mm. that element would be super fun. But I yeah I, did, I didn't like it. But I mean you know the Greatest Showman was that year. Only the Brave, Get Out, and Lady yeah. Bird. Were Only great. the Brave was fantastic. Lady Bird was a Dun- huge hit too. Yeah. Dunkirk, Lady was Bird was awesome. Good. Um, greatest Showman. Yeah. The music yeah. was great though. The story was like. The story was just like extended like music videos, but yeah, music, music the music was is the music was very good. Yeah, yep. That movie was trying to sell me something I didn't want to buy. Hey, can I, I can I, can I before before we get too far afield? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna throw out a quick sidebar. It's it, especially because this is kind of what Mark and I were talking about in the last episode where. Mm-hmm you know, about movies that we just kind of don't, don't share the affection for. <laughs> yes. Um, bless his heart. I mean, nothing against the guy personally, but I just have never been a big Guillermo del Toro fan. Mm-hmm. The the guy who did Shape of Water. And yeah. it just seems like there's a big following and big fan base. Right. Mm-hmm. And because it, it seems like a lot of times I hear about a movie coming out and the reason people are excited is because it's a Guillermo del Toro movie. And yeah. I certainly don't, I mean, it's, I guess, I guess the reason I struggle is because I can't think of any movies of his that I have really, really loved. I mean, they're fine. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like, oh, that's, well, that was, a, that was garbage. No, it was just, you know, cause I, I remember that he did Shape of Water and he's did like the Hellboy movies and, and uh, like 
lots and lots of others. I mean, I think he's done tons of movies, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess that like in the same way that, that Annie Hall and, and Princess Bride didn't really connect for me as movies, Del Toro hasn't connected with me as a director. So That's yeah, cool. just, just so that I can, you know, enter it into the record formally. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, Stated. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so do I get so to go again? You yeah, you go. get the six my turn, and finally? seven picks. So you oh, have I two do? picks in a row. Oh, crap. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, crap. Well, <laughs> my, uh, my, my gamble paid off. And, and because my, the reason I didn't pick that, my first choice first was because I didn't think that you guys would choose it and I was correct. Um, nothing has even been referenced so far that's even close to it. So uh, I, uh, uh, 1980 is i figured i'm you'd thinking a that. pretty <laughs> pretty underrated well so this so the blues yeah i mean yeah. i've already kind of named the blues brothers as my all-time favorite movie um but if that was the only one that year i don't think i would choose that year because the idea is like okay well what are, what are movie years that have a lot of different options but then empire strikes back my favorite star wars movie a lot of people's favorite star wars movie um and then even though you could kind of argue that the Blues Brothers is a comedy first, I think it has it covers enough genres that when I think of my favorite all time comedies, there are some other movies that I that I rank, and one of those is Airplane. Um, if you have not seen Airplane, Airplane is one of the hands down funniest movies. In fact, what's really kind of interesting and and sad is that. It inspired a whole subgenre of comedy, of kind of parody, and uh, you know, kind of. Uh, I'm trying to think of the right the right term. I mean, all of the the scary movie series and all of the you know, basically when you see kind of some mocking knockoff comedy version of some popular, you know, I'm trying I'm just trying to think of examples like. I think like Meet the Spartans was one of them years ago, but but there have been a, a lot of movies over the last 20 years that have that are really just kind of junk. And mm -hmm. they sprang from a genre that was actually really, really fantastic back in the 80s. And so because you had airplane, you had top secret, uh um, there was uh, hot shots, uh the naked gun series, especially the first naked gun movie, just these really, really classic slapstick movies yeah. that were that were parodies of other genres right because the naked gun series was just kind of a parody of like your cop dramas right and and hot shots was kind of like sending up top gun and those kind of action movies Rambo and airplane and, yeah yeah and and airplane is is really just kind of a rem is a comic remake of an old movie from like 20 years earlier that was part of kind of the disaster movie genre yeah um and, airport. And, yeah. Yeah. It so airport. it was one of the first movies from the, the Zucker brothers. They did a Kentucky fried movie a few years earlier that was more of kind of a serial or kind of a, a montage of uh, short clips, but airplane was just this disaster about these people who happen to be on a flight where everybody gets food poisoning. And so all the pilots get taken out. And so this, there's this guy who flew in the war and has PTSD. And so they've got to find a way to get him to land the plane. And, yeah. And so it's kind of like this serious premise, but just with just wall to wall insanity going on and just mm -hmm. one liners and visual gags and yeah, just P a, puns, a, like sight oh, yeah. gags, like joke a minute. It's like oh, a joke yeah. a minute style where it's like pack as many in as you can. Yeah. And um, and a lot of them you don't catch the first time. Like you, yeah. you have to kind of pay attention. But so anyway, that's just one. So so between blues brothers empire strikes back and airplane that would do it by itself but then superman 2 came out that year which is still in a lot of ways my favorite superhero movie um the richard donner or not this okay so not the richard donner cut which is mostly what you see if you if you you know shop for it but the the richard lester version which uh is much more comic and off the wall and has just the bizarre antics of the three supervillains who have to fight you know because you got uh you got general zod played by Terrence Stamp is just one of the all time great kind of half serious, half campy, you know, super villains. Um, and then a movie that I don't think a lot of people are familiar with anymore. I think it was much more well-known kind of, you know, when I was growing up, but uh, 
there's a movie out of South Africa called The Gods Must Be Crazy. Uh, that, I've seen that. One. Oh my gosh, it, yeah, yes. Is just one of the funniest movies I have ever seen that has in in a way that like certainly Airplane and, and Monty Python and, and Raising Arizona didn't. It's just heartwarming. It is it is just such a sweet the the, the premise of the movie, it starts with uh, a tribe of Bushmen in, in Southern Africa who have their lives turned upside down when a, a plane flying overhead, the, the pilot just chucks a Coke bottle out the window. And mm-hmm. it's this foreign object that they've never seen before because they're so isolated. And, and they nominate the, the, the protagonist, the main, the main character to go and take it and throw it off the edge of the earth because it becomes this object of, of envy and, and competition and they, cause they can't share. And so, so the movie is about his journey to try to get rid of this thing. And of course he encounters, you know, more first world culture and all of the, and, and there's this group of revolutionaries who are trying to overthrow the, the local government. And, and so it's just this bonkers, but then there's also like this love story going on on the side. And uh, yeah, I mean, just so, so yet another just fantastic oh, comedy. Um, I mean, I just as I'm thinking about it right now, I'd almost have to say 1980s got to be the greatest comedy mo- movie year. Mm-hmm. I, I think that would have to be my number one choice. But uh, yeah, and probably others, but those are the ones I wrote down. So, mm-hmm. so thank you for not taking 1980 away from me. <laughs> you know, Josh, I'll let you in on a little secret. I wasn't going to choose anything from the 80s because I have strong feelings against. The 80s against the 80s or for the 90s because i was going to say you can keep your 90s. <laughs> I love the 90s here's the thing i think the 70s were amazing and then the 80s was a step back and then the 90s had to repair that damage because mm. here's the thing though before well, you get you're too certainly mad, welcome to your opinion here's the thing though <laughs> you guys have named like a lot of great movies so like i mean to be fair there were still good movies i just can't stand the movies from the 80s that like showed the 80s culture except for maybe back to the future but most of the time you're not even in the 80s so like i just i i don't like how the 80s looked and i don't like the music and i don't like the sound you know like i just i don't like it <laughs> that's a lot of anti-80s hate there i know <laughs> but when we had serious. 80s movies taking place in other times so like indiana jones that was good we were in a different time period it's fine I guess you had to be there. I guess you had to be there. Yeah. That I know. Was, That's another thing. I I will die. Speaking of dying on hills, growing <laughs> up in the 80s was, I, growing up as a kid in the 80s was a choice, honor, and experience. It really was. Like that was, oh, yeah. there, were, there were so many things that felt designed for me. Like mm. just the way that the, and and honestly, I mean, this might be part of, the frustration is just that as opposed to kind of like the, the auteur, you know, like the, the, the way that a lot of seventies movies were a little bit more maybe artistic and sophisticated, mm-hmm. you know, you can make that argument. Eighties was a little bit more pop culture right. You know, and a mm-hmm. little bit more mass mass appeal or, or kind of designed to appeal to, to youngsters and, you know, teens and kids and stuff. And I mean, the movies who were just, in that culture, yeah, but I just I don't think it's a culture that translates well. It was just so specific, kind of very niche. I don't know. All right, I let's get back to jealous. movies. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy, you're just you're just jealous. I will also know <laughs> you two yeah. wish that you could have grown up in the '80s. No, oh my goodness! After seeing, okay, I'm sorry, mom. After seeing some of my mom's school pictures, I'm glad I didn't have those perms. Or those glasses. I, so I had you, so you're you're face, you're implying that, that if we were to go through all of your school photos, <laughs> that there would be absolutely nothing embarrassing <laughs> or dated whatsoever. With my it's, it's, and gotcha. Everything. Gotcha. It sounds to me like you don't like movies from the 1980s because you don't like the fashion of the 1980s. Yeah. No. That's, that's you know, And to be fair, I think that that's probably <laughs> it's the aesthetic. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like with Stranger Things, I love Stranger Things for the story, for the characters. Hate the look of it. 
oh and the sounds gosh. and the music like and the technology i don't i don't care for it well i mean <laughs> i've heard josh, i'm josh so picks, hurt picks such, going back to the year he picked such a good movie or he didn't even name the shining which some people oh, yeah, will right. call the best movie of that year or even of that decade. I mean, oh, it's right. been, yeah. Um, yeah. even in the years since, it's kind of gone up in esteem, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but that was the 1980. Yeah. Movies. What else? What else was it? You got it pulled up in front of you? No. Um, I is that just the only though, one that. Let me. Um, I, a lot of the movies. Because now I just want to check, like, I haven't seen from I that think, year. I think, could my, could my third pick be all the rest of the years from the 80s? Oh, Caddyshack. Friday the 13th. Yeah, the original uh, Friday the 13th. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. Um, could, my, could my pick just be out of spite? Was that, yeah. Does that qualify? The jazz singer. Yeah, you should do a spite yes. pick. Yeah, just do a spite <laughs> pick. Uh, try to do what Danny did where you do like a school year, like 86, 87. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, maybe I should just choose all the other years of the 90s. That would be more oh. spiteful. Oh, the elephant man. I forgot. Yep, that was the elephant my... Man. And ordinary people, I love that. I have that movie. Okay, eighty, yeah, eighty is a great year. <laughs> ordinary people is. You know what? Eighty is a great year is because it didn't get tainted by the rest of the eighties. It was still oh, influenced boy. by the seventies. Mm. I beg to differ. Oh, and young one, young one, <laughs> you have so much to learn. So let's move. Let's move on to round three. Um, Josh <laughs> gets the first pick of round three. I then, do. Oh, we already yeah, know what his pick. <laughs> well that's what i mean i'm choosing all the rest of the 81 <laughs> through 89 <laughs> i mean how about i just choose all the rest of the years that i was alive would that be an acceptable <laughs> cheat <laughs> at least i've been good since you were born that's what it was mm -hmm. that's what it is now honestly in all honesty this is a hard one because i've got a yeah. list of different years mm -hmm. um lots of different years but i don't know which one to choose. Um, I don't think that they're years that you guys would choose. And a couple of them, if it, I don't know, like, I, cause I don't, I definitely don't want to step on anybody's toes, but there are a couple that I have kind of in a different category where uh -huh. it's not necessarily because these are years that have lots of great movies. Like they definitely have a couple of really great movies, but they're years that I hold in a little bit more personal affection because they're years that I remember being seeing, I mean, because they're, well, they're more recent years where I was a critic a bit, you know, and, and so mm -hmm. my connection to reviewing all of them is almost what makes them kind of an affectionate choice, but uh, maybe I'll wait and I'll mention those at the end, just so that just in case any of you guys were going to choose them, because okay. I think they might be worth kind of throwing out. We, 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 could, we can do our honorable mention uh, choices at the end. Um, but, uh, for my third choice, you know what, I'm going to go with 1967. Mm, I'm going to say 1967, okay. which, uh, had a lot of good ones, but had the graduate, uh, which is just a weird movie. If you've never seen it, I think it's one of those ones that a lot of people are familiar with the concept and some of the kind of the more, you know, recognizable, uh, you know, the, the Mrs. Robinson character and maybe even some of the Simon and Garfunkel music and stuff, but it's also the kind of movie that if you actually watch it, like, wow, this is a really weird concept, you know, the, the just a really crazy twist on the dramatic ending that, uh, you know, kind of the romantic cliche that we see in so many kind of rom-coms and romances and stuff, even all by the way, back in 67, which is now what, 55 years ago. Uh, they they kind of gave their own little twist on it that uh, is really remarkable. Um, then The Dirty Dozen, which is currently available on Netflix, also an excellent movie, stars a uh, dozen great characters, including Jim Brown, formerly of the Cleveland Browns in the NFL. Um, that one is just a great, great, you know, I mean, it, it, the basically the movie is that, uh, you know, they have the secret mission during World War II and, and because it's so risky, they decide to recruit all of these kind of war criminals or people who were already kind of incarcerated and they, they make a team. It's, it was, well, I mean, I guess it's like suicide squad from world war two, mm -hmm. except really good <laughs> would be, would be my way to describe the dirty dozen if you haven't seen that one. Um, but the one that really made me note this, this year that is, that is very near and dear to my heart is cool hand Luke um, with uh, Paul Newman who plays kind of a, I mean, he's, he's one of the first real 
full-blown anti-hero uh act uh characters um this guy named guy named luke who gets uh gets thrown in in jail basically because he he gets drunk one night and starts cutting the heads off of the parking meters like that's the opening scene as he's staggering around some downtown area and for some reason he just starts cutting the heads off parking meters and so he winds up in this chain gang um with a bunch of other there's a handful of other kind of familiar uh, actors um but uh and so he's he's just this guy who just cannot blend with mainstream society and and you know can't take orders can't take you know direction and all this kind of thing and uh, there's a very famous scene where the the guy who's kind of in charge of the chain gang talks about how they have a failure to communicate, you know, which is a what kind of we well known thing. here is a failure to communicate. Yeah, you know? yeah, lots of lots of very iconic. I mean, the whole movie is good, but there are a lot of very kind of individual episodes and individual scenes and sequences that are very memorable. Uh, there's a classic one with the eggs where he just because just out of sheer boredom brags he says you know what i can eat 50 eggs and so there's this great scene about him trying to eat 50 eggs while the other guys kind of bet on it and cheer him on and um the one that uh, and this is this is no spoiler alert because a lot of these like i said these are very episodic and they're not really key to the whole overarching uh story arc but uh, uh early on there's this really classic scene where uh george kennedy plays kind of one of the other uh i guess i don't know if you call them inmates if they're on a chain gang but uh but the guys just to kind of entertain themselves and to get exercise, they just have boxing competitions. And so Paul Newman and George Kennedy and George Kennedy is a much bigger, bigger man, bigger actor. Um, they're having a boxing match and, and it's just this brutal scene because Paul Newman is obviously his, you know, Luke is very outmatched, um, but just will not quit. And the scene just kind of goes on and on. And, and George Kennedy's character just keeps pummeling him and knocking him to the ground over and over and over. And Paul Newman, you know, Luke just keeps getting up and keeps getting up. And there's this really just kind of this powerful metaphor for like this, the indomitable human spirit, you know, and all this, but uh, just, just like I said, it's, I didn't want to choose one year based on just one movie. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, in addition to some other real great ones and some, some favorites, cool. And Luke, that's, that's a, if you, if you've not, taking the opportunity that one well worth a couple of couple hours of your time so yeah so i think uh, i will round out my choices with 1967 i like it and and one of my one of the movies that i have that's another favorite of mine is from that year which is bonnie and clyde yeah yeah that's Um, another one yeah and uh very scary movie called wait until dark i don't know if you guys oh that one sure yeah. yeah yeah that kind of defined jump scare (laughs) for me um with alan arkin yes and and audrey hepburn yeah yeah um great pick yeah so yeah i love that one too um let's see we are at danny pick second pick of the third round if you pick like 1986 i'll just laugh out loud (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah so a 1985 just goes back to the future and uh no okay so i'm panicking (laughs) Because, like, uh, I want to do the 70s so bad. Because... Do, do them. No, we haven't okay, done but, any 70s yet. But here's the thing. Yeah, I can't I had, do multiple I... years. Because if you pick any, like, even number uh, from the 70s, like, it was amazing. Because you get, like, a Godfather movie or Rocky. or But, like, they're, they weren't all in the same year. So, like. They're too spread I, out. They're, yeah, they were all spread out. Because, like, it's that or it's, like, another 90s pick. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even want to look at Josh right now. <laughs> so, I think, I think I'd have to go with 1972, though. Because it was okay. kind of, like, the start yeah. of this era, right? Where it's just, it's like, kind of these classic films, right? It's where we got The Godfather. And also, I'm seeing that 1776 is on here which i think is just such an underrated musical i think it's i think it's so fun i love it so much um there are also like a lot of horror stuff i was seeing pop up like child's play um that's 1972 i thought it was, I was gonna say that's gotta be a different child's play oh it might be another child's play wow yeah i think it would because child's be. play is an 80s movie the chucky one <laughs> Yeah, that's got to be 80s. It's got to huh? be a different one. Yeah, no, I'm trying to like 
<laughs> come through here because I, I really do feel like it's more just everything was so spread out. Well, I mean, The Godfather is so good. Godfather you can is almost so good. just say like, that's, you know, that, this and, is and my really... year, 1972. And I'm sure some other movies came out there because yeah. I'm yeah. lying through it. I have not seen very many from that year. I really have not seen a lot from yeah. 72 so now my my threshold was three like if i could name three big ones from the year that was how because i because i have two 70s years on my potential list yeah so i don't i don't know if they're no, and 76 would also be really strong because right. that's when i got right. rocky but then also like taxi driver mm -hmm. and um there was another one all, I the, all, the, all the president's men, men. all the president's men yeah yep, yep. that's what it was very very good so one. yeah no so that one's really good too so i'm like I don't know. I think I have to go 72 just for the more. Well, I don't know. I'm guessing Josh has 77 somewhere on his list. You know, I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's 77? Because 77 was Star Wars. Was Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Well, and then by the end of the year, I believe that Close Encounters came out at the end of 77. I can never mm -hmm. quite remember if it was end of 77 or beginning of 78, but but that was another. It, it but was no, 77. But no, the other, yeah. my other one. I won't mention it now because just in case, Mark, you're, in case you're oh, going to yeah, use I, it. But, uh, okay. you know, I mean, I think, yeah, I think we'll, we'll do kind of a round where we talk about the ones we didn't choose maybe once, yeah. once all the picks have been made. We could do that. Yeah, a quick honorable mention. Because I, because 94 was one of my favorites and that was picked in round one, I my fourth and fifth picks are basically a coin flip. So I'm just going to pick one of them. Um, and then I'll try to talk about the other one i think i would have to go with ah uh, i'm gonna go well, with so i'm 2000. switching to 76 i'm too panicked i'll have okay. that one written down sorry oh, 70, 72 is out <laughs> 72 okay. is out i love 76 all right 76, 76 is a good choice yeah i almost did 74 because godfather part two is my favorite of the yeah godfather. well and it's also the conversation right because it wasn't the conversation in 74 and yeah. and texas chainsaw massacre Yep. Oh, I have not seen that one. Okay. So 76 is great. Cause yeah, you got, you got taxi driver, all the presents, man. Yeah. Um, I think that one has the most altogether, yeah. but I, it's seriously like every even number. Yeah. It's, it's got those Rocky. big ones. Okay. So I'm going to go with 2007. Um, Ooh. I'm not sure if this is like the better pick or kind of going with my heart pick, because there are definitely some movies that are, that are close to my heart that came out this year, but I, mm. I, one thing that I, well, I'll just tell you about the movies because it's a very, it's a extremely uh, variety, you know, it's full of variety this year was. And um, you talk about what are generally considered by critics, probably the two best movies of the year was No Country for Old Men and There Will Be Blood by two, probably the best American directors that are kind of going right now regularly, which is the Coen brothers and P.T. Anderson, Paul Thomas Anderson. And, and No Country for Old Men was the one that won a lot of the Oscars. And it's a movie I've seen a lot. It won the you know, best picture, best director. Um, and then There Will Be Blood has kind of been the one that's considered to be the better movie in later years. And I saw both of those in the theater. Actually, I think I saw them both at the Broadway Theater in downtown Salt Lake. Oh, cool. And I remember at the end of them, because neither, neither of them has a what you would call a happy ending they're both very yeah, dark yeah. and i remember at the end of there will be blood i sat there just staring at the screen and at first i was like is this over i was like at well, first i was like i wonder why that was rated r because i there wasn't anything in it that is traditionally the reason why they rate a movie r but the character of daniel plainview is so evil and just malicious malevolent in every way you can yeah. imagine just him is is just it's just not the well, kind I'm of trying guy. to remember it because the I mean the ending's pretty violent. You're right. There's a brutal kind of a bloody ending, and that that could be it right there. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> but um it was an interesting, I mean, very good movie. I've seen it since, and it's it's a kind of a weird movie because I've actually liked it more every time I've seen it, like which a lot of times doesn't happen with movies. It's like I've seen okay. it, I don't need to see it again. Yeah. Um, there's a great Beatles movie that came out this year called Across the Universe. Well, I call oh. it a Beatles movie. Oh, yeah. It's a movie that you know, features say, many Beatles the, songs. The Beatles and it has, broke up long yeah, before. That. Yeah. <laughs> it has some of the weirdest like musical number, music video slash musical yeah. numbers in the movie that are just, and what they'll do is they'll like repurpose a Beatles song and give it a little bit of a different spin, but keep all the same lyrics and then have it, you know, as a cover 
but then incorporate it into the movie. And almost all the characters in the movie are named after characters in Beatles songs or that are in the titles of Beatles songs. Um, so it's a weird, it's a kind of a fun choice. And for a Beatles fan, it's just fun to watch for that. But it's it's a pretty good movie. Well, we left uh, then we then we left out the one from 2019. Oh, yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, was that was good. I, I was I didn't love that. I, it was a kind of meh for me. I was it, it was just the main character was like he was in such a bad mood the whole movie. And I get why. I mean, I get the reason why, because he was just like kind of racked with guilt yeah. and over what he was doing, but there was such little joy in, in that, that I felt like, man, there should have been more joy. Like maybe it would have been funner to have a character that just didn't have as much of a conscience. It was like, I'm mm. stealing but all these people. Joy little, is little angst. Music. It was, but it was <laughs> angstier than I wanted. And it wasn't. And the ending is anyway. cute. I like the ending. Yeah. yeah. I, with John Lennon. Yeah. yeah. It was. See, anyway. now, so now I want to go and look through 1964 because Hard Day's Night was so good. Mm. I almost want to see what else came out that year, if that would be mm. a contender. Yeah. Well, and if you, anyway, want, to look, if you want to look through those, I do want to comment on 2007 because there are actually like a lot here that. I'm yeah, like, nobody said Hot I Fuzz. Do, I do have a few more. I have a few Hot yeah. Fuzz titles. is better than both of your movies, Mark. Geez. Well, I like Hot Rod, another hot movie, yeah. which is kind of Andy Samberg's <laughs> first. That movie is just ridiculous and dumb and funny. It's just like. You can turn your brain off and it's just a fun movie to watch. Um, Gone Baby Gone, a thriller with another kind of good twist ending. Uh, Blades of Glory, John Heater, uh, you know, after Napoleon Dynamite. Um, Juno. And then um, the Simpsons movie, which at the time <laughs> was my favorite TV show. I'm not afraid to say it. I love The Simpsons. In 2007, that was oh, I still. Think we all love The Simpsons. Was back, my favorite TV show, there. and the movie completely lived up. I was so worried. I was worried that it just wouldn't be good or wouldn't they'd ruin it. And to me, it was just a great, like way better than average, you know, hour and a half Simpsons episode. I guess. Um, well, it was to so turn back fun. to some serious good picks. Uh, no, I'm just, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I'm obviously not super into comedies because I haven't like highlighted any of those but like yeah. the born ultimatum i yeah. i remember yeah, that, seeing that one in theater that that's one of the earlier ones that i remember seeing with my dad like and, and then after you know the whole you know at, at the yeah. end of the series i love i love the end of the series i think that's super fun and i actually really like the assassination of jesse james by the coward robert Ford. oh yeah i felt so bad that i didn't mention it in the film score um, that's episode, a great because one that score is amazing yeah i just so, saw that about a year about two years ago maybe and i i, I really liked it um, Dream Girls performance is amazing. I just yeah, that one's so good. Dream Girls is another one that I loved that came out that year. I got to see them in theater, and then uh, Dan in Real Life and Breach. Oh yeah, oh, that was Dan in Real Life, very funny, good kind of sweet movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Breach, extremely underrated spy kind of rooting out the mole type of movie um, in the CIA that's based on a true story. It's the kind of movie that when you see it, you instantly go to the internet and you want to read Wikipedia or read whatever you can about it. Um, but it, you don't hear about it a lot. I don't even think it did very well. It's like Chris Cooper, Ryan Phillippe. I remember it. I um, remember it. It's it's been a while. I think I only saw it the one time. I mean, it was yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the still not as good as Hot Fuzz. <laughs> Hot Fuzz was fun. That was fun. Hot Fuzz was and awesome. Into the Wild also came out that year, which is a it's a great uh, book and movie. But yeah, so 07. And then nice. when we get to That's our. A good one. Um, maybe we should go in our original order of one, two, three, yeah. Josh, Danny, and then we just talk about any little honorable sure. mentions. We should, okay. we should probably be quick. We're, uh, yeah, we be quick. we're, we're straining the, uh, the patience of our listeners, I think at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Uh, so I was going to say 1975, um, mm. because, uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest jaws, um, jaws and then Monty Python and the Holy grail is just oh. one of the all time comedies. Um, but the ones, so the ones that I had that were more nostalgic, um, 2013 was the first complete year where I was kind of a regular weekly film critic. And mm -hmm. so in addition to having Secret Life of Walter Mitty, which it really is one of my all time favorite movies, a mm -hmm. lot of the movies from that year, I just kind of have a special fondness for because I was, it was kind of my first big dose of, yeah, of, of yeah. doing this on a regular basis. <laughs> like, uh, Gravity came out that year. Uh, mm. The Way Way Back was a, a real great uh, kind of under the radar, more indie movie. Um, and then it was actually the first time 
uh, I reviewed a Fast and Furious movie. Fast and Furious 6 came out that year. So, <laughs> you know, definitely a fun one. But then I also kind of had similar feelings for 2016. Uh, a lot of it was because uh, in all the years that I covered Sundance, Sundance is such a hit and miss thing, right? And so I would read the little blurbs and I would try to, because I, I wasn't going to see everything. And so I would try to try to find, you know, just the best possible options I could, you know, because I'd see maybe about 10, 10 movies, give or take. And for whatever reason, in 2016, I was just hitting like everything, like all the movies I saw at Sundance were at least good, if not mm. some of my favorite movies of the year. And, uh, and so, so the ones that I saw at Sundance, uh, Sing Street was far and away my favorite and, and one of my all-time favorite movies. Little Gangster was this one that I still haven't been able to track down. It was a foreign film. I think it was set in, uh, I think it was in Denmark is mm. where it took place. And just, just a sweet, sweet little movie. Swiss Army Man is just a crazy bonkers weird one <laughs> yeah. that was so much fun to watch with a Sundance crowd. Um, <laughs> but then that year, there were also other movies like I think Hunt for the Wilder People was at Sundance, but I didn't see it at Sundance. I didn't catch until later in the year. And that, I believe, was well, OK, so no, I had seen what we do in the shadows previously. So it was not my first Taika Waititi movie, but uh, it was the first one where I really started paying attention to him. Yeah. Ten Cloverfield Lane was that year. Oh, Rogue no. One, which That's was great you know, arguably the best Disney Star Wars movie. But uh, yeah, and so so 13 and 16, like I said, they I don't know that I would rank them quite with some of the other years, but I'm always going to look at them kind of like with 2019 is just this this fondness of. Yeah, I saw so many of these movies in the context of being a movie critic, as opposed to being a kid growing up in the most holy and righteous 1980s. So there's just a different vibe, but uh, <laughs> it's all anyway, about the vibe. back to you guys. I like that. And and also yeah. just really quick, Arrival, Manchester by the Sea, yeah. uh, La La Land, Moonlight. Remember that yep. thing? That, yep. that this was, was going to be another hyphenated one for me. Yeah. I, yeah. Like I had a lot of fond memories going to the theaters. Oh, so you're going to do 16, 17? I was going to do 16, yeah, 17. Yeah, gotcha, mm. gotcha. But, yeah. Yeah. No, 16, 16 was good times. Yeah. No, that was, that was a fabulous year. Um, I have a runner up of 1999. I didn't want to do two nineties there. Like the nineties was a hard one for me where I'm just like, I don't know which one to pick, but um, that one's fabulous with like matrix fight club, green mile, six cents. Um, it was just like a very strong end to era. Plus my favorite Disney movie, which is Tarzan because it happened to come out like right around the time I was born. So like, that was my Disney movie that I watched on repeat. So yeah, well that once again you you stole mine. That was mine too. I loved it. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. I those you have movies good you taste. Named, That's I love what those we'll movies. Say. Um, also the Virgin Suicides came out that year. I loved that one. That was Sophia Coppola's first movie. And um there was one of the actually so that was that was her sisters. first. Yeah. So her first was wasn't her first uh because when was uh, lost in translation oh that was like oh four that was while we were at utah state was um, that okay yeah oh three because i think that was the first one where she really started to kind of get might have been noticed 03. right yeah that was her like kind of breakout in terms yeah. of being nominated and all that because virgin suicides was a sundance movie okay and um one of the girls who was the daughter of one of the state presidents on my mission in toronto was one of the five virgins i think it might have even been shot in toronto so okay. she, and it's weird because she's the one that has almost no lines, <laughs> but Kirsten Dunst is the main the main one in that. Uh, but it was a cool kind of weird, moody, just a new vibe. I'd never seen a movie like that before. Um, and then Office Space was that year. Magnolia, <laughs> which I've talked about before, being John Malkovich. Uh, we mentioned the Brendan Fraser double whammy right, with right. the Mummy and Blast from the Past. Um, Austin Powers, the first one. And which is the oh, best that one. was a 99. Oh, it wasn't? Was it 97? No, because I specifically remember coming back from the mission field and renting Austin Powers like a week later. Oh, you're which, right. Just you're right. for reference, is the worst possible timing to watch yes. an Austin Powers movie. <laughs> you're right. The um, Spy Who Shagged Me is the second uh, one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's the, the, the second, one. second one. Yeah. Okay. The first one would have been 97, I believe. It would have been. Um, yeah. International Man of Mystery. I can confirm um, that. <laughs> 10 Things I Hate About You, Galaxy Quest. And then as a cheat, this was the year that I watched Life is Beautiful, which came out uh, while I was on my mission, but I watched it in early okay. 99. Did it come out in 98? That. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I know that was a 98 movie, but I saw that in 99. So it was a cool year. It was a great movie year yeah. for me. It was a lot of fun. Cool. So, well, that was fun. Yeah. And slightly insulting, but also mostly fun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was pretty amazed how Danny picked both, like seriously, two of my five. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're on the same same wavelength. And the nineties uh, were great. Like, I mean, seriously, yeah. I well, no, I, and, and bouncing back from the 80s. I have no like, complaints about totally the 90s. in all seriousness. Yeah, <laughs> and this I was kind of telling Mark this before uh, before you came on, yeah. Danny. Like every year that I would pick, it would it was just so fun to kind of go through and see, oh yeah, that was that year. Oh, that was that year. Yeah. Oh, that was that year. And yeah. because I, I honestly don't know that there was any year in the last 50 plus years that is just no good. I mean, right. something yeah. good is coming out every year and usually more than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, like fair. when I was going through stuff like 82, it's like, holy cow, I didn't realize that. I mean, I knew this one was this year, but well, there's this one and this one and this one and this one, yeah. not necessarily my favorite all time movies, but it's just, yeah, I mean, the, my, my big takeaway from this is that there are a lot of good movies out there and, mm -hmm. and yeah. a lot of them that I've seen and a lot of them that you guys have mentioned that, you know, oh yeah, I need to still kind of go back and see that too. And so, yeah, yeah. so this was, this was kind of a fun, kind of fun little exercise. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So is it time, is it time to uh, make our pitch for, uh, please give us good ratings and follow us <laughs> and, and give money please. to our Patreon account. And yeah, no, seriously, yes. uh, you know, wherever you're at, if you're, if you're on iTunes, if you're on Spotify, if you're on YouTube, if you're on anything where you can give us a, a positive rating, five stars, thumbs up, whatever it happens to be, please do so drop us a comment, follow us, <laughs> be, be one of our followers. I still think that's the weirdest thing. It makes me feel like a cult leader. Join my cult. Drink 80s, this Kool-Aid. Right? Yeah. Gosh. And so, uh, but uh, no, uh, jump on the Patreon page. Support us. We got uh, yeah. more content for you. Good times. We're obviously having a fun time with this and we'd love you to be part of it. So uh, until next time, just keep on being excellent to each other and enjoy those 80s. Hey, another 80s movie, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> and with that we leave you see you next time guys bye